Awaken Beauties, finally, it's here. The truth to empower women to true inner beauty through a healthy mind and inner biology. I am your hostess, Cassandra Keel, a 20-year salon owner, organic beauty product formulator, positive mind management, and clinical hypnotherapist. And I am here to help you stay sane, get sleep, and bring your sexy back. Sponsored by evokebeauty.com. E-V-O-Q-Beauty.com. Now, let's get to it. Welcome to the Awaken Beauty Podcast. I am Cassandra, your organic beauty, positive mind management, and clinical hypnotherapist. And today we're going to talk about a subject that is not widely known, but certainly rising in the ranks as far as skin health, aging, anti-aging, and mental health. And today we are actually going to discuss psychodermatology. And so you would probably be able to put the pieces together, what we're going to connect this to, but it really truly is the mind, body, and emotional state and how it plays out in your skin. So I'm sure that if you just take a moment and think back to a memory in your past that was a complete embarrassment, you can sense that face turning red or that clench in your body, whatever that was. You know, I remember being in math class and I had a huge crush on my math teacher. And when he would ask me a question, my face would be bright red because I did not see myself as identify myself as somebody good with math. And so it would turn bright red with a sense of shame. And if you're feeling overwhelmed you know, if you have mounting deadlines at work and all of a sudden you feel eczema is flaring up or that itching just kind of gets out of control. These moments, these sensations in the body, you know, are a reflection of what really is going on inside. And what you're feeling inside is obviously reflected in our skin. Now, recently on the podcast, I had Dr. Mario Martinez on, and we talked about psychoimmunology, not necessarily psychodermatology, but they do overlap. And I wanted to kind of discuss this, this com- it's con- you know, converse about psychodermatology because I believe that it is an absolute connection to why, you know, I've been in the health and beauty industry for almost two decades, we have such an epidemic of eczema, psoriasis, autoimmune type disorders. And in fact, I just had a client leave here tonight and we were talking about, you know, this term that I coined brain-based beauty and why it's so important. And she got it right away where she said I had to move back from New York um, because she was getting shingles and just completely stressed. So mental health and our skin is directly related to each other and how they symbiotically have a relationship. So, you know, we can't always cause and effect a certain situation or symptom in the body. And it's really hard to really nail it down, but there's no denying the intimate and intricate brain skin connection. So aside from being derived from the same embryologic tissue, the ectoderm, the bond between the brain and the skin is very complex and it's really fascinating. And it's the focus of these areas in both dermatology and medicine in which they now are coining the term psychodermatology and psychoneuroimmunology as the interplay between the mind, the skin, and our immune system. So in plain English, this just means that what we think, what we feel, and see can play a significant role in what shows up 
on our skin. Now, this does include aging. And at the end of this really great short episode, I'm going to give you an experiment and really talk about how I believe that the future of anti-aging is really stress reduction and why I am, you know, creating programs around, you know, getting the body into that theta zone so that the body can heal. So let's just kind of step into getting to know the brain skin connection. So as your largest organ, your skin protects you from the outside world. It is there to put its fence up so that it can guard you and keep you safe from, you know, your internal organs. And it plays a huge, huge role in your immune system. And it also protects us from infection. So it absorbs right? It also secretes things out of the body and excretes to keep the skin hydrated. It helps regulate our body temperature. It helps toxins get out of our body. And the metabolites that are going on within the body as well. And it has very, very a plethora of different nerve fibers and endings allowing us to feel pain and pleasure. So, you know, it's really quite remarkable when we just think about anti-aging and skin. Our skin is so valuable to us and what it does for us. And it's not only produces hormones like vitamin D, but it also has a huge role in playing the regulation of our hormones throughout our entire body. So the brain and the nervous system influence the skin's immune cells through various chemical messengers and receptor sites. And then it's these receptor sites that interact and have a bi-directional, you know, communication with stress. You know, I often talked about this with CBD and how and why we have a CD, CBD balm and skin serum is that, you know, highly inflammatory skin, the skin and CBD receptors in the skin have a bi-directional conversation going on that help calm down the skin when you put the topical on the skin. So we all know, right, that stress is an, in, it's just inevitable. It's an inevitable part of life. And we're under a great amount of mental. We can't forget our physical stressors, our emotional pressures that we're feeling, especially now kind of trying to float in and out of COVID and how our world is changing, not knowing what's going to be coming up and just being in that very hypervigilant state that we perceive, you know, our per, how we perceive stress really exceeds our ability to adapt to it. So our brain plays a major role in how we respond to stress in our life, in which what happens is it actually exerts its effect on the skin, and it happens through the channel and the terrain of our hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, better known as HPA. So when this response is activated, right? So that's where we perceive the stress. It's coming in. The brain plays that role of the stress response. It activates the HPA and it's activated. And then the stress hormones such as CARH, which is corticotropin releasing hormone, glucosteroids and epinephrine are all released from the HPA. So it's kind of like, ah, you know, freak out, body goes into hyper alarm, and it results in this wide range of psychologic and immune reactions that trigger and just exasperate either a predisposed skin issue at hand, or maybe you just turn red like I did in math class. Um, and it causes further issues down the road and yes, does age us faster. So what we want to do is understand where the philosophy and the research now with psychodermatology really stands. And so I kind of dug into this a little bit and it gets really, really interesting. And so recent research has confirmed that skin both has an immediate stress perceiver and as a target stress responses. So because they're is a fully functional peripheral HPA system within the skin, which we just reviewed. All of the stress hormones and their receptors are produced in skin cells, just like the HPA system originating in the brain. So basically what we're saying here is that there's an HPA kind of mindful, a brain, a, an awareness 
um, an information information through the HPA system in the skin, just like we do in the brain. So what does this mean for you and this information I'm sharing? So really what it means is that stress stimulates both the brain and the skin to signal release of hormones that trigger our inflammation response. And what happens when we're inflamed? One, it's infla-aging. It impairs wound healing. It accelerates the aging and the telomerase production, which is the enzyme that helps the telomeres, which lengthens our beautiful aging cells. And it worsens skin conditions. You know, it just makes that acne, that eczema, that psoriasis two times worse. So it really makes sense then that a two-way communication between the brain and the skin can cause issues for both what shows up on the skin and how we viscerally respond to it. So it basically breaks down into two different categories within the research of psychodermatology. And so these these will generally have an overlap as well with a third, but I think you'll kind of understand once I read through them, and I hate to get too geeky on you, but I want to make sure that the science is really thorough. So there's the psychophysiological, right? So this is how our mind affects our skin. So skin conditions have a psychological basis based on how we're affected by stress and our emotional factors. And this is going to have a direct response on acne, alopecia areata, which is basically hair loss, psoriasis, hives, rosacea, and basically what we call hyperhidrosis, which is profuse sweating, um, all fall into the psychophysiological sector of psychodermatology. Now, the second one is going to be psychiatric, and that's how our skin affects our mood. Now, conditions that are cosmetically, um, let's use the word disconfigurating or potentially socially stigmatized, such as things like um, vitiligo is one, um, psoriasis, really severe acne, these create feelings of absolute embarrassment and shame. And, you know, if you look further down and when you're not able to express yourself or want to show up for who you are, uh, it causes extreme anxiety and depression. And it totally erodes self-confidence and self-esteem. So to think that, you know, our mood doesn't affect and have this corresponding, it just makes it worse when we have these issues and then it turns into a psychiatric issue. And one study actually, for example, found that there was an increased number of hospital admissions secondary to the primary mental health disorder with the coexistence of uh, really severe acne and rosacea. So it very much kind of all is connected. So the third is going to be the primary psychiatric. So this is how our mood affects our skin. And skin disorders like things like hair pulling, um, self-inflicted damage to the skin, and the belief that the body is infested with different organisms. These are basically people that have delusions of um, periositis, and these are all symptoms and underlying primary psychiatric disorder. So the management of these conditions require multidisciplinaries um, to really address both the dermatologic and the psychiatric care of the client at hand. And these are a little bit more severe. So, you know, stepping out of that, now we kind of have those three different tiers of the uh, physiological, psychological, the psychiatric, and then the primary psychiatric. And, you know, improving our mind-body connection, I really think is the key takeaway here and how we can do that. And that's why I love brain-based beauty is that, you know, attraction starts in the mind and how we are, um, 
indoctrinated as very young women that we always are having to fix ourselves, that we're always catching ourselves in the mirror to see how we're better. Comparison on social media. You know, I do a lot of thought work with women just kind of paring down one thought at a time and you've got to get it out of your head so that your mind can then start to neutralize things, thoughts, behaviors in the mind so that you can really um, transition into a life that you love. And it starts with loving yourself first. So the mind-body connection, while not everyone will react the same to having a skin problem, nor respond emotionally through their skin, you know, studies and data, especially being in the industry, very much suggest that in some people creating a treatment plan that addresses the management of our skin's uh, physiology, as well as our mental health will optimize the outcomes if you suffer from any of these kind of symptoms or frankly, just want to slow down aging. So here are just a couple of tips. You know, I am in the organic beauty space. I'm a clinical hypnotherapist and biofeedback practitioner. So, you know, a lot of these might just like sound redundant, but it's just a good reminder. And obviously the first one is going to be meditation. I also find that self-hypnosis is really helpful or just music and laying on your back on the floor, just getting the nervous system to reset and ground it is a wonderful way to anchor in. And so, you know, studies with the vagus nerve and focused breathing and mindfulness, guided meditations, all of these techniques help us get into that theta zone, gets us down into that brain wave where the body is able to connect with the conscious subconscious mind and release all of the, um, let's call it monkey mind that's going on. And this really, really has been very successful for a variety of skin conditions, you know, especially when it comes to acne, alopecia, um, der dermatitis, and psoriasis. I can't tell you how many times I have clients come in and they're having flare-ups and it's either diet-related or it's stress-related. And obviously they go hand in hand because we're stressed, we're going to eat things we shouldn't. The next is going to be movement. And there's a lot of research that indicates that movement, including aerobic exercise and yoga is very beneficial for skin conditions with a psychological component. Um, and this obviously is going to be de-stressing. It's getting the body to detox and getting all of the metabolic systems, you know, rejuved, making sure that we've got all of our hormones moving and shifting really, really, really key is going to be the movement, you know, and then the third is going to be nutrition and really focusing on nutrient dense meals, looking at the rainbow, you know, the energetics of the rainbow all give us different attributes. And so nutrient dense whole foods are very anti-inflammatory, right? Key to aging and skin disorders. They have abundant antioxidants, which is going to go in and clean up oxidative, you know, reactive species, which is um, oxidative stress. And we also want to focus on low glycemic foods like wild caught fish or pasteurized raised eggs and tons of green vegetables, just as brightly colored fruits and, and vegetables as you possibly can. And these will boost your mood and beautify your skin. So, you know, that's kind of where I wanted to fold it up on the world of a psychodermatology. I thought it was, it's just such a, it's a fascinating kind of a no brainer to me, but I'm really happy that the studies and the research and the the field is actually starting to connect mental health back to our beauty. And, you know, we don't, we know about the mind skin connection, but I think if we're more aware of how our mental and emotional health really can help us starting there first, we'll then have a direct effect on our skin and our aging is just such a, 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 a very important piece I think all women can take. So I want to end with just a really, um, just a, fun experiment, you know, with aging and, you know, no matter what your age is, I uh, want to just like, if you're on your downtime, go and find a photo of you when you were younger, you know, like you're having fun, you're innocent, just go find whatever photo that you can find. And so look at um, that photo and put it on your cell phone. So take a picture of it. 
And when you were much younger, you felt youthful, you felt energized and keep it on your cell phone or any personal device. And then after viewing the photo, close your eyes and go into your inner world, calm that breath down and just be introspective. And then recall the joyful memories of those younger days and observing how you experience them in your body. Be present. Make it very, very much a part of you experiencing it at that time, going back into your memory and imagination, which is so powerful. And turn that up. Turn it up and amp it up, that beautiful time of joy and fun in your life. You felt sexy, whenever that was. Now do something joyful in the present as if you were the age you imagine. And just start now to feel that level of energy and excitement for your life in those days. Now practice that technique throughout the day, always starting with looking at the photo that you chose and then refresh the mind-body connection and retrieve those memories. Our mind is so powerful and really it is all a matter of directing our mind. But it's a fun way to go back into and anchor in your youth, the vitalization in you right now, no matter what your age. And try this for at least a week, right? So here's a little bit of info on that exercise. And you know, Dr. Mario Martinez does a great job of explaining how culture defines aging and where women in Africa have shame around menopause, whereas women in Japan call it the second spring. And they live much longer. They have joy in their life and they're great role models to younger women. So, you know, the theory is memory sells age. But memories are ageless. I just love that. Memory sells age, but memories are ageless. And they're always there in your subconscious mind. And not remembering is mostly related to the emotion and context associated with memory. Then, you know, we start to get older and we have cognitive deterioration. And this is why we remember people who inspired us and tend to forget those who ignored us. And so when looking at a photo of a younger image of you, you're actually scanning memory archives of people who inspire you as well. And as you observe how the memory is expressed in your mind and body, these precious thoughts and emotions are actually relived. And what you sense and what you feel yield the answers to what I would call the felt meaning signature of that memory. So you're locking it in, you're feeling the bioenergetics, the energetics that then overflow the body in this renewed, rejuvenated state. So it's bringing back the meaning throughout that day of the people who inspired you, what was going on in your time, in your life at that time. It just brings additional mind, body, emotional value to really, truly what I call the anti-aging mind-body effect, brain-based beauty, ladies. So this does not mean that you pretend you are younger. It doesn't mean that you go and, you know, buy a bunch of clothes you shouldn't be wearing, but instead just experience the vitality, the hopes, the dreams, and the freshness of the younger you with an ageless mindfulness. And then what happens to you is inhabit this renewed space rather than accumulated memory over time of negativity and what's going on in your life right now because we can renew our mind. And by living in the present with the embodied memories of that vitality from your past, it has actually studied that the biocognitive information in your memory archives help us become more ageless when we visit them throughout our long wellness journey of life. So it's pretty fascinating how to bring this all together. But as you look at that younger photo of you, recalling the memories of how you used to walk, the speed, the gait, the smoothness, the lightness, you're embodying that felt meaning and it generates more of that feeling in the cellular memory and the cells in the body. So, you know, I very, very much recommend doing this if you feel so pleased to do so, or you just go back to a memory when you felt sexy 
you know, maybe you just want to feel sexy again. Whatever that memory is for you it doesn't have to be a, a young picture of you. But it is the, the cognitive, it's the memory, it's the sensory system. It's bringing all the body's uh, sensory systems together to rejuvenate the cells in the cellular memory. So don't rush the experience. Just give your body time to inhabit that new space rather than it allowing to accumulate more time. Bring up those memories versus the old patterns and start to shift those patterns and create a pattern interrupt in the body. So I hope you enjoyed this ending exercise of how to embody the state of youth and how that actually has been proven to help our cellular memory and our cells to rejuvenate themselves and give the body some peace and relaxation, which then ultimately connected back to the psychodermatology and the, gain, the brain and skin connection and how the more we can relax, the body can be at ease, um, the less of the hormones that are released through the HPA in the skin and the brain access, which pumps out the epinephrine and the cortisol and all of these things that put us into that excitatory state. So keep that in mind, literally, the next time you are having a uh, shame attack. And uh, let me tell you something, another piece of research that has been studied is that the antidote to shame, and remember this, please, is honor. And when you have someone shame you non-intentionally, respect them, love them and say, you know, I honor you and where you're at right now, but I honor myself even more to not let that come into my soul and my spirit. And then through the rest of the day, just like the photo imagery experience, uh, you always honor yourself. So by you taking over the shame and exchanging it with honor, it has been proven that it actually excretes uh, very good hormones into the body to then start the pattern interrupt, remove the shame, whatever it was linked to, and uh, start getting your body moving in the right way as far as immune boosting uh, IgG factors. So I just love the research, love how it's all coming together. Uh, it's not rocket science, but it does take a little bit of work, some thought work and self love and self-care. So all for now, my ladies, until next time, stay sane, get sleep and bring your sexy back. And don't forget to go to evokebeauty.com, evoqbeauty.com for all of our awesome organic, natural and food grade skincare, hair care and CBD products. All right. Ciao, ciao. Well, hello, Awaken Beauty. Thank you so much for joining the show today. Were you inspired? Please leave a comment or your own personal aha moment so others can capture exactly what you did. Also, please like and subscribe wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. And if you're interested in high quality natural products for your hair, skin, and wellness, including organic, CBD, please visit evokebeauty.com. Again, that is evokebeauty.com, evokebeauty.com. And until next time, darling, stay sane, get sleep, and bring your sexy back.